Welcome into the Locked On Knicks podcast, the New York Knicks. Does, does it get old hearing this? I doubt it. Pull off one of their wins of the season, 101-92 in a knockout, dragout fight against the Miami Heat that unfortunately left the Knicks scar. Julius Randle turned his ankle. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about spectacular performances from the young Knicks backcourt and a unique lineup that took the Knicks down the stretch. All that and more right now on Locked On Knicks. You are Locked On Knicks, your daily New York Knicks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Knicks, and today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Basketball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an NBA GM and managing your basketball franchise? Then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimatebasketballgm.com or look it up on the app stores or listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On. that's Locked On in all caps, in the game. And uh, we want to thank you for making Locked On Knicks your first listen today and every day if you didn't know. Well, now you do. We're available on all platforms. That includes anywhere you can find your podcasts and on YouTube. There's only, there's only one YouTube, but if you're there, be sure to subscribe. Uh, be sure to hit that notifications bell so you never, ever miss an episode. But Who's talking to you? I'm Gavin Shaw, your favorite play-by-play broadcaster's favorite play-by-play broadcaster. He is Alex Wolf, editor-in-chief of the Strickland, the greatest Knicks website in the whole wide world, and your New York Knicks slayed the Miami Heat uh, pretty much. I maybe I'm I'm, I'm jinxing it, particularly with the injury that happened tonight, but but are looking. I'll, I'll say it like this: looking very good now for the five seed, despite the Nets. Uh, they need a late comeback, but they pulled off a win over the Rockets, but uh, some, some storm clouds a brewing Alex Julius Randall um, going up for a rebound turned. I think I, I probably should look this up before it turned. I think it was his left ankle um, mm-hmm. coming down on bam out of bio's foot uh, gamely uh, still shot the two free throws one, one for two limped off to the locker room. You could see him basically stumbling, trying to get off the court by himself. Uh, it did not look good for Julius Randall. Yeah. I mean, I know, like I always feel like a joke when we like relate our own personal experiences to those of NBA players, but I've had that injury before of stepping on someone's foot and having your ankle turn like that. And it is really nasty. Like it might not look quite as bad as it is like in the moment. It looked like he just kind of tweaked it, but man, something about when you step on someone's and I'm sure anyone who's listening that's ever had this happen to them. Like if you step on someone's shoe, and your ankle just gives out like it gives out like twice as hard as it normally would because you're starting from an elevated position already. It's just not it's not pretty. And it looked really painful for him. Um, I really yeah, hope a like, quick update because I just saw yeah. it. Um, t- Tom Thibodeau quote uh, quote post game. He'll be evaluated tomorrow. They just said sprained ankle. So. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it is just a sprain. However, like quote unquote, just a sprain. I mean, it could be a grade one, a grade two, a grade three. Yeah. Again, as someone who had something similar to that myself, I never actually like went to the doctor and got it looked at. I just kind of like babied it for a long time and iced it. But like I had the whole like bruising along the bottom of the foot. And like, I mean, that could take a while if it's a particularly bad sprain. I hope it's not. But it's just again, I just felt for the guy like I just got like instant sympathy pains when I saw that. Um it's just so painful. It's like beyond painful when you, when you sprain it that hard off someone's shoe like that. I mean, the implications run pretty deep too, that we're obviously we're so we just talked about it this morning when we were talking about like, Oh, this is a crucial little stretch for the Knicks here, these final six games. But like, you know, it's, it's crunch time now, like the playoffs are kind of right around the corner. So a two week injury or three week injury might spill into the first couple games of the playoffs at this point. So, I mean, Obviously, I hope he's okay from that standpoint, but the playoff implications kind of run deep on this one, unfortunately. Um, so hopefully in that regard, too, he's it's not anything as serious as it looked, but I think there's at least a chance based off the react based off the fact that he couldn't immediately put weight on it and how bad he looked walking to the locker room after shooting the free throws and trying to walk it off. I'm not hopeful that this is going to be a situation like Brunson like a month or so ago or whatever, where he turned his ankle and then was able to come back like the next game. Unfortunately, this, if 
if I'm using my putting on my amateur uh, uh, sports medicine hat looks to me like it's probably going to be at least a multi game thing for Julius. Yeah. And could I mean, especially if the Knicks do lock up the five seed in pretty quick succession, like I wouldn't be surprised if the next time we see or I'll, I'll say I wouldn't be shocked if the next time we see him is the first game of the playoffs. And and obviously you don't want that. I mean, there, there's a world obviously where he's out through the first round. Like, I don't even want to think about that. Like, I mean, like a really bad sprained ankle can do that. I mean, I, I think any any I don't know why they'd be listening, but any Warriors fans listening know like the hell that Steph Curry went through early in his career with his ankles. Like it can it can get really, really bad. Um, and the truth is, uh, is, as it usually is, is probably somewhere in the middle there. Um, and, and hopefully he's able to at least get a couple of games in before the postseason. And and I, I think we should say first and foremost, I mean, you, you, you basically just did, but wish Julius the best. Hope it's not that bad. Hoping for a quick recovery, whatever it is. Um, but in, in purely a basketball context, it's going to be fascinating to see how they survive this because the Knicks solution, even though Obi Toppin, at least offensively, was it was in the midst of a pretty good game. Tibbs' solution was to actually pivot and go small. Um, the lineup he played in the fourth quarter, which uh, our, our good friend Ian Begley uh, did, did some research, found out the Knicks um, seemingly haven't really touched it all season. I don't really remember this lineup being on the floor all season, Alex, maybe for like some short stint here, here or there, but it was Emmanuel quickly, Quentin Grimes, RJ Barrett, Josh Hart, Isaiah Hartenstein, and they were absolutely elite defensively. Um, they outscored Miami 25 to 16 um, over the course of the fourth quarter. I mean, having just quickly Grimes and Hart on the floor together felt monumental. I thought RJ, who I, it was playing a terrible game in the first half, offensively in particular, was very locked in on defense in the fourth. I heart all game long was absolutely elite defensively. We can get into the specifics a, a bit later, but his his anticipation, his timing, his effort, all great. This is a lineup that could be effective. My concern is we might not see a ton of it in closing stretches because Jalen Brunson's going to be on the floor. And I wonder if not having a power forward for that extra bit of rim protection is more of an issue when your point of attack defense isn't absolutely elite like it is when you have quickly and Grimes and Hart all playing together. Yeah, I think I think actually that lineup was pretty I mean, first off, it was a really good call. Like credit to Tibbs for going to that. Like it was clearly the right call at the time. And he's hinted, he hinted like when Hart first came on that he might play him as like the quote unquote four for stretches. And this was that um, sort of weirdly prescient of us when we were like, you literally brought this up on the preview podcast we did uh, before this game that like, yeah, back. yeah. yeah like there was, <laughs> there's a chance that maybe like, uh, you know, Toppin might end up out of the rotation in the playoffs if he wasn't playing well. And, and it might end up with Josh Hart, you know, taking over some of those four minutes. Uh, but I think it mostly had to do with the team that they were facing and the fact that the Heat were running a very similar lineup, right? Like that, their lineup, who would you consider their four down the stretch? Like Jimmy, Jimmy Butler. Butler. Yeah, Jimmy right. Butler, yeah. So, I mean, Butler is the four, RJ is the four, or Hart, or whoever you want to say. Like, I think Hart was guarding him more, but like, whoever you want to say the nominal four was, it kind of made sense because the Heat were running at almost the exact same lineup. Um, I don't know if he would go to that necessarily, like, let's say it was against the Cavs who are going to be running out Jared Allen and Evan Mobley to close games. I don't know that we're going to see that lineup necessarily. I feel like Obi would probably be the call there because he would be the closest thing to what Tibbs values, or he would do something totally wild and be like Jericho Sims, get off the bench. You're back as a four again. Uh, Cause that worked so well early in the season. Um, it actually did work better than we thought it would to be fair, but <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It was, I, I, I really enjoyed what, that lineup was able to bring down the stretch. I just, I question its utility a little bit. I guess a really easy test of that though, will just be on Friday. Like if Julius is out, which I feel like he'll definitely at least be out for a game or two uh, based off how that injury looked like if he's out Friday, that's a, that's a good chance to potentially give that a shot and see if you can play that small lineup against a team that's going to play bigger players like the Cavs do pretty much at all times. So uh, it'll be interesting to see going forward if, if that lineup gets more burn or not. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like, I like what it brings to the table defensively. Again, I wonder how it looks if, if Brunson's in there for Grimes, I think is probably the most likely substitute. And I think it 
uh, obviously more potent offensively, but maybe starts to fall apart defensively a little. Um, but we will we will see. Um, final final update uh, from Ian Begley, New York Knicks teammates. Checked in with Julius Randle after the game. Emmanuel quickly said Randle was in good spirits. I don't know the severity of Randle's ankle sprain. I know it was bad just by the reaction when they showed the replay quickly said, but he was in good spirits. Um, so hopefully that that means something good. We have no idea. We're not doctors. We can't tell the future, but uh, hoping for the best for, for Julius Randle. Um, and that was kind of the, um, maybe not the lone uh, dark spot, but really the only one that, that was meaningful on, on a night that otherwise was incredible for the Knicks. We're going to get into all of it in just a sec. But first, Alex, if you want to, uh, build your own basketball dynasty in a world where maybe I'm wrong about this, but as far as I know, without sprained ankles, uh, how, how would you go about it? Well, regrettably, there are sometimes sprained ankles. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, we can't quite say that that's not the case. But uh, yeah, it, one of my favorite games recently has been Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. And it's the coolest game I've played in a while. I, I always thought I could be a great NBA GM. And as it turns out, it's not all that easy. Uh, well, until you figure it out. And then once you get awesome at it, that I'm not going to be humble here. Like, I got pretty good at this game. Uh, so if you've had the same thought and have fantasized about managing your own basketball franchise, go and download Ultimate Pro Basketball GM right now. And I've read your YouTube comments and stuff and the way that people talk about our ideas about teams and whatever, or, you know, the players on the team and stuff. So I know that some of you guys have strong opinions about how to build a basketball team. Uh, this game allows you to manage every strategic aspect of a franchise, playing through seasons and leading your franchise and fans to glory as you build a historic dynasty. In the simulation, you're responsible for dealing with challenging personalities, hiring the right coaches and assistants, trading and training players, and making draft picks. That's the key part. I'll tell you right now if you decide to play the game. And navigating your franchise through free agency in the draft and all the ups and downs of multiple seasons and uh yeah i've i've had a great time playing it i've created a a dynasty with the new york team uh they're not called the knicks in this game probably due to licensing issues but i have uh, the new york team in this one funny enough you start with a story of like our team is a disgrace we need you to bring it up from the rubble it tracks, man. It, it hits home for Knicks fans. So Locked On Knicks listeners get a 100% free boost to your franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probasketballgm.com. Scan the code or look it up on the app store. That's probasketballgm.com. Ultimate Basketball GM. Start your dynasty today. All right, Gavin, we're back to continue talking about this fantastic Knicks win. A, uh, a Another uh, a chance to give the final score 101 to 92, the Knicks win this game. And it was mostly thanks to a great end of game run uh, that saw them just kind of create the space that they needed on the scoreboard and not relinquish it. Uh, it was sort of, I, I realized we didn't, in, in getting into the Julius Randle news so quick, we didn't really give like a little summary of the game. Uh, but for anyone that didn't get to see, I mean, basically it was a back and forth affair for most of the game. Uh, Emmanuel quickly and Quentin Grimes played really well. Uh, both of them shot eight of 14 overall for the game and uh, quickly had 24 points. Grimes had 23. Uh, Jalen Brunson made his return, did look a little rusty. RJ Barrett did not have his best game. So certainly it was not, um, it was not his usual self against the heat. Uh, but Josh Hart, Played really well off the bench. Obi Toppin, Isaiah Hartenstein did his thing. Uh, pretty solid game overall that went back and forth for most of the game until the very end when the Knicks just, I, as you noted in the first segment, Gavin, with that small lineup, turned the defense up to 11 and put the, the heat away just by virtue of pestering the ever-living hell out of them. Uh, so I'll leave it to you. Who do you want to talk about first as far as individual performances go? Yeah, I mean, I think I think we got to start off with Quentin Grimes because he was the one who started off this game and, and was the only one uh, who seemed ready to play tonight, Alex. Um, the, the first Nick to score, not named Quentin Grimes, was Jalen Brunson with four minutes and five seconds left in the first quarter. Um, Br uh, Grimes had the first eight and then had a near four-point play where it would have been a four-point play, but he, he missed the free throw, and that was, that was a theme throughout the game. The Knicks uh, finished the game shooting uh, 12 for 23 from the free throw line, which is a really good three-point percentage. Not a bad percentage from two. Uh, not what you want from the free throw line. 52% uh, 
Um, and after getting up eight to nothing, when Grimes was just cooking, the heat ripped off 14 points in a row. It looked like one of those games where I was just dreading to come on the podcast after and talk about it. And then Emmanuel quickly comes in and, and, and picks up the slack. And honestly, Alex, like over the course of the final, like three and a half quarters of this game, sort of looked like Steph Curry to me with the shot making. Like I've, I've referenced it before. I'm always like oh, a bit, a touch of Steph Curry. He just, he just looked like Steph flat out tonight. Um, He had three different buckets in this game where he scored over three guys. The, the first one, uh, well, right after right in, coming right into the game, he like kind of showed it was going to be different than last time out where he was tentative, like raced right to the rim and hit a runner. Um, then literally the next play got a steal or it might have been off a rebound Went one on three in transition. It wasn't three Knicks against one heat. It was it was one Emmanuel quickly against three Miami Heat players um, went through all of them and one missed the free throw, though. Um, then had that shot where he was. And if you watch the game, you remember what I'm talking about behind the backboard. Again, three players around him somehow got it to go, plus the foul. Um, and then in the third quarter, um, hit a sidestep three-pointer with, again, three different dudes flying at him. And it, the, the, the shot making is just insane. Like that Euro step reverse layup between two defenders in transition. Like it felt like we were watching a guy with superpowers playing against a bunch of muggles. Um, he, was, he was absolutely uh, spectacular. And I, I was almost stunned when I looked at the box score. I was like, oh, he only had 24. I felt like he poured in another 40 tonight. Uh, he was great. Grimes was great. What, what, what did you think of the two of them? I mean, I think they were great. What else is there to say, right? Um, All right, end the show. <laughs> yep, that's it. I'm done. Uh, no, I mean, I'm with you, like, on pretty much everything. I, I think the, the quickly behind the backboard shot was one of the coolest Knicks individual shots i can remember like just from like a cool factor mm -hmm. in a while like obviously it's a little cooler to have like rj's game winner against the celtics last year like julius's game winner against the heat this year because they're like game winners or whatever but this one just from like degree of difficulty i mean if you've ever tried to shoot from like behind the backboard at all like that it's so hard and he just like he got just the right spin on it it was like he got like a like a right spin on it to get it to spin to the right when it hit the rim. It was just like beautifully executed. I mean, the touch was incredible and I, that just sort of underscored, like this was just another uh, like superhuman effort from him uh, scoring the basketball. I think he was like, he missed a couple shots to end the game, but I think that at a certain point he was like seven of 10 or something. And, obviously ends at eight for 14, which is still like a fantastic percentage, but just like uh, he was a maestro, but that part of that too comes down to how he played uh, as far as facilitating as well. And I remember one of the plays that really made me go, wow, was this like it just a pass. I couldn't even wrap my brain around. Like this was not a Steph Curry moment. This was like a, like a Chris Paul or, or are you, you going to say the one, the one Hardenstein? Yes, absolutely. It was crazy. Like quickly yeah. was in the corner and I'll have to like watch a replay and see how he did it, but just like laced it through two defenders and like around someone's body while in the corner. I just, I have no idea how he pulled that pass off. Like the touch was insane. And just like, like it's hard to even describe it. Like he was in the corner, wrapped it around his defender, but then also managed to like bounce it under the outstretched arm of Hartenstein's defender and got it to Hartenstein. It was just like, it was crazy. It was such a great pass. I mean, he just really did everything and just made wow plays up and down the board in this game. Yeah. I thought what, what stood out to me because I mean, we talked about how Miami kind of um, like got in the Knicks head last time around by throwing a bunch of double teams and, and they did it to Randall and, and, they were doing it until Julius got hurt. Um, like they were doing it with a whole lot of success to him again. Um, like they were doing it to Brunson and not, not really as much this game, just because I, I don't think they, I, they, I guess realized pretty quickly he wasn't at a hundred percent, but they tried doing it to quickly. And it was so obvious that this dude has just spent the last like 48 hours since the Rockets game devouring film on that first matchup with the heat. And he, he made them pay every time they threw multiple guys. And I'm like, I already talked about the shot making, against multiple guys but but to your point the playmaking was also spectacular there's one play that really stood out to me where um Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson I think were switching an action 
against him, but both of them got confused where I think they both thought, all right, oh, shoot, this is Duncan. Oh, shoot, this is Tyler. Um, he needs help guarding Emmanuel quickly. Um, so they both sort of stayed, um, but then eventually, like, one of them was going to break off, and then right when quickly saw that was going to happen, he stunted right at them, and they both kind of had to stay. And then while that was happening, Josh Hart is just peeling off towards the opposite corner. Duncan Robinson sees it at the corner of his eye, is about to go over to get a closeout on him, and then quickly takes one hard dribble towards Duncan Robinson. Duncan Robinson has to respect that because if not, quickly is getting a layup, and then quickly just zips into the corner. Easy three for Josh Hart. We saw it again at the very end of the half where those two doubled him, and quickly does exactly what you're supposed to, right? He drags them out to half court, leaves plenty of room, lob pass to Josh Hart. Josh Hart, a great connector, touch pass into the corner. Jalen Brunson, buzzer beating three. And we, we just saw different versions of that, Alex, over and over and over again. But Emmanuel quickly was was playing the heat like a marionette in this game. And he, he made these these double schemes from Eric Spolstra, arguably the best coach in the NBA that looked brilliant in the first matchup between the two teams, looked like a high school coach, like trying to stop an NBA player. So that was that was monumental. And and at least in my mind, not not that the Knicks like are, are in all likelihood going to see the heat in the playoffs, but it kind of deflated any fear I have of the Miami Heat in, in one night. Yeah, and well, and more importantly, just kind of showed that the guys on this team can react better to that sort of style of defense um, because that's probably something that's going to happen in the playoffs regardless of who they Absolutely. play. You know, I think the Cavs are going to do that too. Like we were just talking about that when we were previewing this game. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think this is very encouraging as far as their ability to like absorb like Randall and Brunson and Barrett all – not really having good games and yet they still found ways to make it work thanks to Emmanuel quickly Quentin Grimes and like Josh Hart and others so um yeah this is kind of a this game was definitely like a testament to the Knicks depth and and their players adaptability and able ability to sort of you know learn uh, what opponents are giving them um but at any rate Gavin uh real quick before we maybe gush a little more about Quentin Grimes and then talk about some of the other things from this game. Uh, do you want to let everybody know where, if they're feeling super confident, they could maybe place a bet on the Knicks? Yeah. Well, if you're on, if you're on YouTube, you, you already know it, it's FanDuel. The tournament is heating up and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel America's number one sports book. That's because right now FanDuel is giving new customers a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. It's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, all you have to do is go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and sign up today to claim your no sweat first bet. Then you can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the net when it's all said and done. It's all in the app that's safe, secure, and I promise super easy to use. That's my favorite part of it. So don't miss your shot at a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. And with that, we are back on Locked on Knicks. Alex, I'm going to take you up on your offer. I am going to gush more about Quentin Grimes. Because I, was so, I was so eager to get to Emmanuel quickly. I didn't do him justice. But this guy, he had eight points and four rebounds in the first two minutes and 10 seconds of the game. If you, I'm, I'm going to do some quick math here. If you stretch that out, so you'd be multiplying it by 24, that is, let me see, 320 plus 32. 352 points and, and half that many rebounds, like 178 <laughs> rebounds. for That would have been pretty good. Unfortunately, he did not maintain that pace. Uh, people can can check my math and, and criticize me when I'm wrong in the comments. Um, but yeah, then he had the near four-point play. And then what I loved, Alex, is like th this felt like we just got early season Grimes back for a night, and I know he's been flashing the scoring chops, but I'm just talking about his physicality and his power in the air. And this sounds like a – I'm going really grandiose with my comparisons today. I said Steph for IQ. There's like a, a drop of Zion Williamson in Quentin Grimes. Like when he just like elevates so quickly and so powerfully, like he did this on Kevin Love and he just gets like basically like his shoulder is in your face faster than you can blink. And, and he's just laying it in right through your contact. Like I, I want every bit of that from Quentin Grimes night in and night out. When you combine that with, with the shooting um, finish this game with five, three pointers, like, and, and four assists and probably and would have had five, except um, Isaiah Hardenstein blew a bunny when he got into the lane with five seconds left on the shot clock. Like this is this is the dude we wanted to see this entire year. Yeah. And this is like exactly the sort of performance you need out of him. And he's kind of coming on at just the right time. Right. Like he is the guy like and we've seen this earlier this year, even and at times last year, like he's the guy that when you're short somebody 
you know, due to injury or short two bodies due to injury, like, you know, like big injuries, like, you know, to RJ Barrett or, or Brunson or Randall, that sort of thing. He's the guy that you very often need to step up, especially in that starting lineup. And if, if other guys are being neutralized more, you also need, you know, quality contributions from him. So yeah, like he gave you everything that you needed and more in this one uh, with the, the hot shooting. I mean, if he continues shooting as confidently as he is right now, he might have like a uh, make a name for himself in the playoffs sort of moment, you know, in this, in this first round series, because he's, he's playing as good right now. I think as we've ever seen him for any stretch over these last, what, four games now, I think now that he's had this level of play. Um, So I hope that, I hope he just keeps having the, the personal green light and, and the confidence to keep taking all the looks that he's taking because he looks fantastic doing it. And his cutting is getting better. Like when he was in his really cold stretch a few weeks ago, I remember I said something about like, I, I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but every bit of timing just felt like a fraction of a second off with him. And now everything feels like it's been like fine tuned, like a clock. And he's just, everything is, is going perfect for him right now. So uh, I'm definitely excited to see what the next few weeks are going to uh, give us with him. I figured I would, I would highlight Josh Hart next. I feel like Josh Hart kind of, it's funny. Like I feel like we almost underappreciate him to a degree some days because he just brings the exact same thing every single game Mm. and does it so well. But I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up like just how game busting he was at the end of this one. Like, between him, Grimes, and quickly, the closing defense with that lineup that ultimately put the Heat away was just so impressive. I mean, these three guys on the floor together are just like, how can you make any passes when those three guys are out there? They're just everywhere all at once. Like, just, and they're not even like, other than quickly, they're not even like the, like, crazy crazy wingspan specimens or anything they're just like pure hustle um it, just everywhere getting at every single ball josh hart ends with uh 13 points shoots six of seven one on one from three uh eight boards which feels like such a sure thing you can count on from him like damn near a double double at the small forward spot three assists two steals uh between hart and quickly and grimes they end up with six steals in total which is crazy. And also Hartenstein, another two steals. So eight steals between the four of those guys, which made all the difference down the stretch uh, because those were the key plays that sort of broke the backs of the heat. Yeah. He, I, I think it's a great point by you because it's, it's, it's metronomic consistency. And I don't think even when it's a, a, a quote unquote role player, like I, I don't think people realize how good you have to be to do that every night. Like he, he is just so incredibly additive. Like e- even, even his bad games, you, you, you go back and you're like, all right, he made, he made five incredible plays that, 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 that changed the complexion of the game. Um, and he, he was a, like, like you can't give the Knicks front office enough credit for recognizing what kind of fit he would be on this team relative to someone like Cam Reddish, even relative to someone like Deuce McBride, who does, some of the same things, but just doesn't have the, the literally the height to, to do what Josh Hart does. Um, and it's simple plays, right? It's, it's pushing hard in transition and, and slipping the ball back to Obi Toppin for a wide open three. And that, that gave Obi some confidence that he came out in the second half and made another three. Um, the pass that I, I mentioned earlier with quickly, like Hart, like you, you always hear this term in, 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 in regards to draft prospects, like, like he's a connector. Um, you hear what teams always seem to need a connector. That, that, that play was the epitome of a connector, him catching it and in one motion in the air, knowing exactly where Jalen Brunson was, knowing exactly how, how the defense was going to move. And if you don't make that pass at that moment, Brunson is covered and or, or he doesn't have enough time to get the shot off. But Hart knew where he was going to go with the basketball before he got the basketball, made that pass. And I think if the Knicks were lacking anything, Alex, before that trade, it was a little bit of that north-south verve and, and power that Hart has that we saw in the second half with him dunking the ball, getting layups in transition, um, twice in this game, rushing in off of, of misses, once in transition on an IQ miss, once in the half court off an RJ miss, and getting a putback. They were missing a little bit of that force around the rim, but they were also missing like that basketball IQ and, and that ability to just make rapid-fire decisions. And as much as it 
is paying dividends for the Knicks in the regular season. I think if they win a playoff series, it's going to be because of Josh Hart. And and I think in retrospect, like it would have been foolish to think that this team could have won a playoff series without Josh Hart. So man, uh, not knock on everything you have. I hope that guy uh, stays healthy um, along with getting Julius Randle back. Um, and then also just mixes in like some crazy ISO plays sometimes like, like the spin on Cody Martin was nuts. Like I, I was looking at that when he was spinning his, it looked like his back was by Cody Martin's knee. I don't even know, or maybe it's Caleb Martin. I forgot which one's which, but I, I don't know how he got that low. That was ridiculous. Um, he is, he's an awesome player, but, but Alex, we've, we've almost like in, in a weird way, buried the lead. The Knicks beat the heat by nine in a game where uh, Jalen Brunson, Julius Randall, RJ Barrett shot a combined four for 21 in the first half. They finished the game, a combined uh, more quick math here, uh, 10 for 28. Uh, that's, that I, I don't I don't know if that's been true all season, mu- much less against a team as good as the Heat. Yeah, I mean it's like I said, it's kind of telling of their overall. I mean, because it's not even like it's not like Randall didn't play at all before he got injured too. Like he was 14 minutes in, or almost 15 minutes into this game, and only had three points uh, on one of five shooting, and like that's. I, they really did not get much production at all from like the, the big three. And even if you want to look at Mitch too, like just out of the starters in general, like Mitch only had two points on one of three shooting as well. So like four out of your five starters really did not have great games. That's quick head math, 17, 29 points out of four fifths of your starting lineup. Like yeah. usually you want that out of one player, you know, like that's, that's not great. So it's kind of a testament to the the bench depth in this game. And I think, I mean, so for one thing, I don't expect Brunson to look like he did in this game for long. He'll probably be fine after a game or two because um, it's his. It's not his dominant hand that's hurt. So as long as he just kind of – granted, he does finish a ton of plays with his right hand, so that might affect him some, but it's at least not the hand that he shoots with and stuff like that. So, you know, if it takes a little time to heal and it maybe just affects his righty layups a bit, he should still be able to, to do pretty well. Randall, obviously, we already talked about the injury. So, I mean, the, the way he was playing didn't have anything to do with the injury. But, you know, hopefully he's back soon. RJ, I, I, yeah, I mean, he just couldn't hit anything in the first half. I think he started the game, what, 0 for 8 before he finally got one to go in? Um, maybe 0 for 9 by the time he finally got one? I know. I think he was at the free throw line at 0 for 8, if I remember correctly. I forget where that, that streak ended, but ends up shooting 4 of 13. Um I don't know. I I guess there's no like really the main thing is just Brunson needs to not be rusty and Randall hopefully needs to still work on avoiding those doubles and letting those affect him in the way that they did. And then RJ just needs to find more consistency. Um, but I, I thought that Gavin, Isaiah Hartenstein and Obi Toppin did a pretty great job off the bench as well. Obi, I'll just briefly uh, talk about, but like he didn't, he didn't ultimately get as many minutes as you might have thought, thanks to that small lineup coming out at the end. But he got 17 of them. He hit two of four from three, so ended up with six points, but also had four assists. And one of them was a really gorgeous feed to Isaiah Hartenstein, like really good heads up vision play. Yeah. Obi was like in position for like an elbow three, and instead, it, the Heat just sent the entire defense out to the perimeter. And uh, Obi noticed and Hart, uh, Hartenstein noticed, like, I'm open <laughs> and pointed at the rim, like, throw it there. <laughs> and Obi threw just like a really picture perfect pass, like one that Obi would probably wishes would get thrown to him all the time. Um, <laughs> this is how you do it, guys. Just yeah. like this. <laughs> he, I hope that he ribbed at least one person about that in the locker room and be like, hey, you see the pass I threw? That's how you're supposed to throw passes. Not that hard. <laughs> Not that hard. Um, but so he did that. That was fantastic. And then Hardenstein, you know, again, just another one of those games where he didn't make a huge impact in the scoring column. He only had six points, but made a huge impact on the game overall uh, with nine boards, two assists, two steals, a block, and all in all just providing really good, not even necessarily like rim protection dependent defense, but just really good, like handsy disruptive defense, I thought, which was sort of the, the calling card of that closing lineup. Yeah, I, I just to circle back real quick, like two two quick things on um, or I'll, I'll just go quick things on all of them. Like one, like Randall, the double teams really got to him again, which surprised me. Like I, I thought he was going to come out and have 
a better um, mentality. And he, he also like, he, he wasn't really forcing shots, but looked weirdly like after a really good pass to set up Grimes for three early in the game, like he looked like he didn't want any part of this heat team. Like, I, I mean, maybe there was something up even, even before he turned his ankle, but it was just a weirdly lethargic performance from him mixed in with bursts of unnecessary aggressiveness. RJ, I really like, hated his start like he, he kept trying to go at jimmy butler and kept throwing up contested runners and it really reminded me of the first 10 to 12 games of the season from him where obviously things were were just terrible but the shot selection that has been largely really good recently just just fell out the window and and that's always that's always where you get stuck with rj right where it's like all right there's progress and then there's the fall and then there's progress and then there's the fall and like you just want to get to a point where at the very least the process is pretty consistent from night to night. And it's just, it's just not for him. Like even he hit maybe the biggest shot of the game, right? When it was 97, 89, two minutes to go, he, he had a quarter three, which was the dagger. And you want to give him credit for that. But on that play, he was getting closed out on Emmanuel quickly, like five feet away from him. I can't imagine RJ didn't notice him was wide open quickly is, is, is cooking. And RJ just ignores him to shoot the quarter three. And it was a no, no, no. Yes. Shot because it went in, but it, I, in the moment, I still don't, I don't like the process there. I'm sorry. And then Jalen Brunson, it was weird, right? Because it's a hand injury, but he looked just not explosive. Like whenever, like maybe part of it was that his Bam out of bio who makes a lot of good guards look less explosive than they are. But um, he just, he couldn't get any separation on switches and just, just looks slow. And I wonder maybe part of that is because like a lot of the reason he can get separation is because his handle's so good and, and not being able to use his right hand to the extent that he wants to affected him. But I, I'm with you. I'm, I don't really have any concerns there. Um, and then, and then finally, um, to your point on Obi, yeah, he's same thing as Josh Hart. He's, he's a connector. And, and that's the one thing the Knicks will gain with Julius Randle being out. Like they will be a quicker ball moving team without Randle. There's also going to be nights where they look terrible offensively because they just don't have enough juice without Julius. Um, but, but that is, that is one thing they'll gain. And then Hardenstein, man, I, I thought he played all NBA level defense, especially in the first half of this game. Like, like we always talk about in the pick and roll, the ability to guard two guys at once. Oladipo and Cody Zeller uh, running it. And then he stayed in front of Oladipo, tipped the pass to Zeller, blocked Tyler Hero, uh, guarding him one-on-one on a three. Like, reminded me of those old Mitch blocks, like shut down Bam out of bio on the baseline one time. Like, he was he was all over the place. So, yeah, um, in- incredible win for the Knicks without their guys. Best wishes to Julius Randle. Uh, that, that's all I got, Alex. Yeah, that's all I got, too. So, get well soon, Julius. I hope the the diagnosis is good. Uh, but we'll we'll keep things updated over the the coming days, and I'm sure there will be at least some more clarity before the Cavs game on Friday. So uh, we'll have you guys covered with that, though. But until next time, thank you all for listening, and we'll talk to you all soon. Peace out.